Hi, my name is Albert Dunford, and in this tutorial video, we are going to look at swapping out the MOSFET and diode with SPICE models, which is part of the new version 11 release. We are integrating a SPICE engine into PSIM, which will allow you to either run a PSIM simulation by itself or run a SPICE simulation with SPICE models. So this simulation currently is set up to use PSIM ideal switches. So we can see we've got a MOSFET and an ideal diode here and we're driving them with this on-off controller here. So this MOSFET is getting turned on and off, and we can look at the results here. Uh, pretty standard stuff. Have a little look over at steady state. Now, what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna swap out this MOSFET and diode with SPICE models. So the SPICE models we're gonna use, I'm gonna pull from Vichy. So I've poked around on Vichy and I've identified a MOSFET that has a SPICE model and also a diode that has a SPICE model. And we can take a quick peek at their data sheet. So here is the diode. The, uh, it's a 15 amp, uh, 60 volts, and it's obviously it's got a SPICE model. So we'll grab that SPICE model in a second. And we've also got a MOSFET. Uh, the MOSFET is 38 amps and 30 volts. So that should do okay for our 24 volts at, to five volts. And we've got about six amps through the diode. Uh, which will be about the maximum through the uh, MOSFET as well. So let's grab some SPICE models here. So on the Vichy website, they have helpfully provided download links at the bottom here uh, for the SPICE, model, SPICE models, and then on the MOSFET as well. Depending on which engine you're using, you download whichever one. So I'm grabbing the TXT file, and uh, there's only one diode here for the PDF. Um, and these are the corresponding documents. So here is the, the MOSFET model. So we'll just select all of this, we'll copy it, and we'll come over here into our SPICE model, we'll pull up this directive block, place it, and we will paste. So there's the uh, SI4628DY uh, subcircuit with drain, gate, and source. We'll also make a little bit of room here at the bottom, and we will grab that spice model for the um, diode and we'll just grab uh, this. Now we need to edit this a little bit. So I'm not gonna, this is set up for a slightly different uh, language, a uh, different version of spice than what we're using. So we'll just copy this right now and we'll paste over here and we'll grab this name, the 15TQ and uh, we'll put it up here in place of this name. And we need to declare this with a dot model instead of the format that they were using. And now we should be essentially good to go because we've now we've got these diode models in and the MOSFET model. Uh, next up, uh, let's close that down, is we need to switch this diode model out with a SPICE model, the one we just used. So we'll go SPICE model and we'll go back in here and we'll grab 15TQ, the name come over here and put it in, close that down. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to the MOSFET, the MOSFET is not a simple uh, NMOS statement. Um, so here's a look at the, 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 the basic model. It's just a simple dot model NMOS. The uh, MOSFET model we're using actually contains uh, regular NMOS models, but what we need to actually use is the subcircuit. So what we'll do there is we'll grab the SPICE subcircuit block. And it's got uh, three nodes. And uh, we'll grab uh, the name for it here, SI4628DY. We'll copy, come back over here, we'll paste. And because I put in three nodes, it automatically is thinking that I'm likely going to be doing a switch. So we'll go and we'll grab the corresponding MOSFET end channel. Uh, with drain gate source as the image, drop that on, close that, and we can rotate this a couple times. We'll delete the old model, and we'll go and drag and drop that on. Okay, so there we go. Uh, the next thing we need to look at is we can no longer just drive this MOSFET with, an, with the on-off signal here, with the ideal switch control. We need to now drive this with a voltage source and current source reference to the source. So I'm going to get rid of 
this and we'll disable that uh, and then we'll go back over here into elements power other and grab an op amp and we'll grab an inverted one so we'll replace that down we'll connect this down and we'll reference this op amp to the source of the switch and i will change the voltage source here to the rail voltage to something appropriate and i will insert a gate resistor we'll call this rg we'll give it something sensible like an ohm and we'll look at the current flowing through it as well so those are all the changes that are needed so in simulation control and if you forget where that comes from simulate simulation control uh, we had my original PSIM simulation parameters for one microsecond time step and 0.6 milliseconds total time and we'll switch to the spice tab now and we'll see uh, if I want to use initial conditions we'll see the initial time step and max time these sorts of things are and the end timer here if I need to use some um, tolerance options I'll, I'll enable those operating point etc are here uh, the various analyses and the integration methods. So right now we'll use the gear integration method and we'll order it to six and we are ready to run. So we just go up here. So again, there's the two options, run PSIM. So if we try and run PSIM now, it's going to complain that there's spice models involved. So we'll go back and we'll run the spice simulation and uh, we can see uh, the simulation results right here. Um, which are slightly different from the originals be, uh, be, as we now have some impedance involved. So we see the voltage drop here. We can also pick up uh, the current through the gate if we like and see what that looks like. So there's, um, let me scale that. So there's what that looks like and maybe pick up the what, VDS. So the voltage across the switch and maybe, uh, current through the diode might be kind of fun and we'll zoom in and rescale and see what that looks like okay so there's some options to look at the waveforms uh, one thing we will notice is that it, uh, in the simulation messages down here it's saying that uh, unrecognized parameter RL and T measured from the original model are um unknown by our spice uh engine so we can just go back here and delete them and we can rerun and those messages should be gone and we should see our original results here okay and we'll zoom in on that and take a peek at what's going on okay so now what we'll do is we'll take the models that we've got stored in this directive block and we will save them as files so that we can use the the browse feature to find them in uh with with PSIM instead so we'll be able to go in and find in the library these files the the model files instead of having them stored here so what we'll do is we'll just go and we'll uh, just copy all of this and we will go to my spice tutorial video folder we'll open this up and make a new text document and we'll call this video uh, models and we will save everything in here and hit save and then what we'll do over here is we'll go to set path we'll add a folder uh, that folder is documents spice video library documents spice video and we'll select and we'll hit save and we'll close and we need to restart PSIM in order for it to pull in those models. So we'll grab this and uh, open up that file again. And now what we should be able to see model list. So we now we see that 15 TQ 060 getting pulled in and we see the parameter from it over there. Uh, and we can also view these sub circuits so we also see that that sil uh, si 4628dy model is in there now as well so we can now disable this block <clears throat> completely and uh, rerun and it'll pick up out of the uh, file now all the appropriate files that were models we're looking for one of the other things that you can do with the 
Uh, spice engine is you can generate a netlist. So in this case, we could generate a spice netlist uh, .cir file, which is LT Spice compatible. So we can run back over here and we see that new file there and we can launch this and run the spice engine of LT Spice and pick up a couple waveforms. We're at trace and the out is that guy. So there's the output voltage according to LT Spice. Okay, so that's a look at most of the features with the Spice Engine. The last thing to comment on is the Spice Netlist Check tool here from the Utilities menu, uh, which will go over a Netlist Check if you're checking, if you're pulling in a Spice Netlist from another tool, and we'll check to make sure it's compatible with the uh, engine that PSIM is using for Spice. And otherwise, look for other videos that uh, go into the various subjects in a little bit more depth. This was just meant as an overview of how everything works and to help you get started. Okay, please let us know if you have any questions. Uh, my name again, Albert Dunford, and uh, looking forward to hearing from you and uh, any other feedback that you might have on the improvements to PSIM. Okay, thank you so much.